Do not be afraid. Many times when angels appear to humans in the New Testament, they find it necessary to say that line. Do not be afraid. In my case, it is the opposite. You should be very, very afraid of what I have to say. The Apostle John tells of his apocalyptic vision in colorful, symbolic language that has always been challenging for his readers. Even the finest scholars argue about much of the meaning of Revelation. You have no idea how good of a job John did when he wrote Revelation. Imagine trying to describe all of the things he saw in crude human language. He did get to write in Greek, maybe the finest human language ever developed, but still. How would you even begin to adequately describe a creature covered with eyes and wings? John did a fantastic job, but it is no wonder that humans have a hard time understanding much of what he wrote. Concerning Revelation, it is hard for human beings to understand which things are literal and which are symbolic. It is hard to understand which things are happening at what point in time. It is hard to know which things may be applicable in more than one way and at more than one point in time. And that is when you are considering just the book of Revelation. When you add other scriptures from books such as Isaiah, Daniel, and Matthew, the possibilities for interpretation are endless. It is not surprising there are so many books and sermons about Revelation. And it is not surprising that so many humans, people, just throw up their hands in frustration and refuse to study Revelation. So rather than interpret what John wrote, I will just describe what he saw and experienced. I'm sorry that I have to use human language instead of heavenly language, which would be much more descriptive, even than Greek. I will begin by describing what happened after John was in the spirit and entered heaven. John saw the one sitting on the throne holding a scroll with seven seals. I was the mighty angel who proclaimed in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? When no one in heaven or earth was worthy, John wept in despair. But one of the elders in heaven told John that Jesus was worthy. And John saw that it was so. Then the four living creatures, 24 elders, and innumerable angels praised Jesus. They acknowledged that he was worthy because he purchased people from every nation with his blood and death. Heaven reverberating with innumerable angels singing, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Imagine it. I was one of those angels. It shakes me to my core to think about it. Before I go on, I must give you essential fundamental particulars. A little background information. A few of you, people in today's time, still read books. You know what it means to read the front and back of a page, then turn to the next page. In John's time, they typically read scrolls. These were typically 20 or so pages stitched or glued together on their side to make a roll of up to 20 feet long. Some of these had writing on the front and back, such as the one John had seen. To prevent tampering or unwanted reading, 
a rolled up scroll was sealed with clay or wax that was impressed with the owner's mark. An example of this was a Roman will that might be sealed with different seals of multiple witnesses. These wills were only unsealed and read at the death of the person who created the will. People of John's time were well aware of the intrinsic power of scrolls and seals. They had built-in authority, dominance, and control. About a century before John wrote Revelation, the fate of the Roman Empire changed when Octavian purported to have obtained the will of Mark Anthony and used it against him politically. Without seals in place, it was impossible to know whether the will was real or fake. Back to Revelation. Jesus opened four of the seals of the scrolls. As he did, four riders on four horses came out. A white horse with a conqueror, a red horse with a warrior, a black horse with an economic destroyer, and a pale horse with death riding it. These riders clearly had the power to bring tremendous devastation on the earth. This scene is where your term, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, comes from. When Jesus opened the fifth seal, voices were heard asking for God to be vengeful. These voices were of martyrs that had died because of their faithfulness to the Word of God. They were told to be patient until the number of martyrs was completed. Jesus opened the sixth seal and chaos ensued. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black. The moon turned red and stars fell from the sky. Every island disappeared. All of the mountains vanished. Every human being on earth, no matter their political or economic status, doomed and desperate for a place to hide from the coming wrath of God, and of Jesus. You should have seen poor old John when he saw those things. An almost fatal blow of shock. Certainly he was not expecting the world to come to an end at that moment. And it didn't. He saw four angels at the corners of the earth holding back the harmful winds. Another angel coming from the east instructed them not to damage the land or sea until 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel had been marked with a seal on their foreheads. John saw the angels, elders, and four creatures worship God and Jesus along with countless numbers of human people in white robes. This innumerable multitude were from every nation, every tribe, every people, and every single language. An elder told John that these were the ones who came out of the Great Tribulation. He went on to say that they served God, and he protected and provided for them perfectly. What about the seventh seal? Bear with me another moment. First, trumpets. Information or better enlightenment about trumpets. In the ancient Greek and Roman cultures, trumpets were used as musical instruments and to public gatherings or momentous events. The ancient Jews used them to get ready for battle and the fall of Jericho and for distinct and specific religious rites. In the other New Testament books, the trumpet is most associated with God's appearance at the end of time. In Revelation, trumpets serve as warning signals of the advent of God's kingdom. When Jesus opened the seventh seal, there was complete silence in heaven. As the minutes ticked by. John trembled to the verge of tears. After half an hour, John was at his breaking point. The seven angels standing before God were given seven trumpets. 
Another angel had a golden vessel filled with incense. The incense was the prayers of the saints. He filled it with fire from the altar and hurled it to the ground, which caused thunder and lightning and an earthquake. The seven angels raised their trumpets. John's knees gave way beneath him. The first trumpet signaled, and hail and fire mixed with blood hurled to earth. A third of the trees, earth, and grass was incinerated. The second trumpet signaled. A mountain-type object was hurled into the sea. One third of the sea turned to blood. One third of all ships were destroyed. And one third of all living creatures in the sea died. The third trumpet sounded. A star named Wormwood fell into the waters of the earth, where a third of all rivers and springs turned bitter, toxic, causing many, many to die. The fourth trumpet signaled. A third of the sun, moon, and stars were struck, which darkened one third of the earth both day and night. John was sure it couldn't get much worse. Then he heard a piercing sound, an eagle flying in the air, crying out for the surviving inhabitants of the world to be very worried, because the last three trumpets were preparing to blast. The fifth trumpet sounded. The abyss opened and locust-like creatures were given the power to torture all people not having the seal of God. They stung so fiercely, so mercilessly, that the people wanted to die, but could not. The sixth trumpet sounded. Four angels were released to kill one-third of mankind. John heard that the number of mounted troops used to do this was 200 million. What exactly is one third of mankind? For you, it's 2.53 billion people, equivalent to the annihilation of the entire population of North America, Europe, and all of China. No one left. Every person, gone dead. In John's time, people were used to bloodshed and violence. I would expect your present-day sensibilities to be shocked by the vast amount of death and destruction I've described. Why would a loving God do all these violent things? The answer was found after the sixth trumpet was sounded. Even after all of the pain, all of the violence, the bloodshed, the survivors refused to repent of worshiping idols and demons. God was doing everything he could to bring them to repentance, but they would not change their ways. They would not turn away from committing murder, practicing witchcraft, sinning sexually, or s stealing. So the woe of the sixth trumpet continued. Another angel as mighty as myself came down from heaven. He shouted and the seven thunders spoke. John heard it, but he was not allowed to write what he heard. The angel announced that there would be no more delay. The mystery of God would now be accomplished. John was instructed to eat the scroll in the angel's hand, and then ordered to prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. John was ordered to measure the temple of God, and informed that people would trample the holy city for 42 months. God would give power to two witnesses for 1,260 days to prophesy and to punish the peoples of the earth. After that time, the beast from the abyss would kill them, and all people will celebrate their death for three and a half days. 
however. The breath of life re-enters the two witnesses, and God calls them up to heaven. Their enemies look on in wonder and terror when an earthquake hits and a tenth of Jerusalem collapses. The survivors finally give glory to God. This was about half of John's time in heaven. A good stopping point. Read the Revelation of John. Understand the details of what I told you about the seals and the seven trumpets. One more. Then the seventh trumpet sounded. Loud voices announced that the kingdom of the world had become the kingdom of Jesus, and he will reign forever and ever. The twenty-four elders rejoiced in the fact that judgment had come, and it was time to reward the prophets, saints, and all who reverenced the name of God. God's temple in heaven was open.